Welcome to Meet the Ambassadors program where we meet ambassadors from different nations around the world who are based in Bangkok. And this week we'll be meeting Ambassadors Gaze Peter Rath from the Netherlands. Before meeting him, I would like to give you a bit of the background. Um, Ambassador Gaze was born in Amsterdam, the capital of the Netherlands, and then he attended a French speaking school in Brussels, Belgium. When he finishes high school, he returned back to Amsterdam to study law school and international relations. And he has been in service for over 30 years within five countries, um, including Thailand. So there is Kenya, the US, Brazil, and Nicaragua. And during this COVID situation, we have to be extra precautious about it and keeping distance and also always wear masks. So are you ready to meet the ambassadors? Let's go. <laughs> the residence of Ambassadors Gays Peter Rad and yeah let's go meet him now. Hello, welcome to the residence. Welcome. So during this COVID situation, a why will do at this time. So Yes, we have to, to keep, to the, keep, the, rules. keep the rules. Yeah. Yes, so. Shall we go inside? Yes. Yeah. Please. Please. <laughs> So welcome to the residence. Thank it's you. slightly cooler atmosphere than outside. Yes, it's already water. Cool. It's warming up. Already. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, this is our residence. It was built uh, beginning of last century, I think 1907, 1910, something like that. So it's more than a century old. As you can see, the beautiful wood used and so on. And it was built uh, by a prince. And when it was built, this whole area were paddy fields, basically. And Bangkok was at the river. So here, all these buildings, of course, did not exist then. So it was very quiet then. It has slightly changed. As you can see now, it is building everywhere, yeah, it is yeah, concrete, and this is now the heart from, of uh, Bangkok. From here it's also quiet because as you see the gardens and the beautiful trees yeah, outside. We are, yeah, we are so lucky to have this compound. We feel very much like a little green oasis, a little bit of jungle uh, in the middle of this world of uh, concrete, so we're very happy. Uh, so it was built beginning of the 20th century and uh, we bought it in 1949. So we have it for quite a while already. And uh, in the meantime, it, before we bought it, it has been, for example, during the Second World War, the mm. Japanese army had uh, some, some, some work based being here. done based mm. here. It has belonged to the Boy Scouts of Thailand. They had offices here. So it has had all kinds That's of different true. uses until we bought it. Mm. And I'm very grateful to my pre 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 predecessor <laughs> for having bought this because uh, so yes. it always has been the, the, the residence of the Netherlands yes. since, since yes. at that time. Yes. yes. And uh, well, here you see and some gallery. Uh, wow. historical pictures. This is the coronation of our king, which was seven, eight, eight years ago already. And as you can see, all kinds of guests, including two very prominent guests from Thailand. His Majesty, who then, of course, was not yet uh, Rama wow. the who then was of course yet not, he was a prince then, but he was uh, one of the one of the guests, and this is actually uh, of course uh, late uh, Rama Nine, His Majesty, uh, with she was our queen then, Queen Beatrix, and this was taken at the occasion of a state visit of our queen 2004. And she came in 2004 because, believe it or not, in 2004 we were celebrating the fact that we have 400 years of bilateral relations, oh, which is very yeah, long time. Very long. So in 1604, mm -hmm. we had the first uh, Dutch people coming to Thailand and actually they went to Ayutthaya. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if your viewers yeah. like the previous tourism. Capital. Yes, okay. the previous capital. And actually there is uh, Van Hollanda there. It's a little museum. Oh about our presence in uh, Thailand at that time. period. And it's very interesting to visit. It's relatively small, but it's 
really if people would like to have a nice outing uh, weekend, it's certainly Yeah, and we can insert that down here if anyone would like to visit. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, it's a half a million of you know, relationships. Yeah, so that's yeah it's very long time, happening. very long time. So this is okay. the main part of the residence. This is where we hold our receptions. We can also have many tables for dinners for many people. Unfortunately, because of COVID, no big dinners, no parties, no receptions, no conferences. We have a lot of conferences we do here. Virtually, yeah. Yes, we had quite a lot of uh, Thai ministers already coming mm -hmm. here for uh, conferences on climate change or on water, mm -hmm. or we had a few Dutch companies here. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, as you can see, this is um, ample right. space. Yeah, and a lot of art pieces on the wall. Yeah, it's all Dutch, all uh, Dutch paintings. Uh, from different styles, you might like it. You might, era. you might find it interesting, as they say. Like for example, this carpet is also from a Dutch designer. Lots of colors. We like colors and so on, and also the, as you can see, the works of art. Make it more vibrant. Yeah, to have that nice contrast. And uh, perhaps we can go yes. to see the, the outside. Mm. Okay. You can go outside? Yes. Yeah. Well, this is our, uh, our terrace. And uh, of course, we have the fantastic uh, characteristic of this residence is that we have a lake. I mean, in the middle of Bangkok, we have this little lake oh, here. Yes. So it's, it is fantastic. It's full with fish and turtles oh, and turtles uh, as well. monitor lizards. Oh, wow. oh yeah, we have many, many oh, monitor sure. lizards. <laughs> Our friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, over there is actually, I think, one of your other uh, ambassadors, the uh, amb ambassador from the yeah. United States. Mm -hmm. That's their embassy. And his residence is on the other side. So we are I kind of a whole block and we hope to keep it green to maintain the trees yeah, it's and such a green space see, here yeah. yeah no it's fantastic really Amazing. so this is really very pleasant uh, to, to, to be here so maybe you can stand here and show the fountains a little bit yeah sure oh look there's a oh look there is oh. one <laughs> there's a little friend there yeah he, but he's going to disappear <laughs> soon so if you want him you should <laughs> but it's a small one. We have very big yes, ones. Yes, there's large one in a the, the, the park. The lumpy yeah, yeah, park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Park. Yes, as well, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ambassador Gates and this is Katrina. Um, so like the rest, we will start off with the gift giving session of some um, Thai gifts to have some cultural exchange. Um, so I know that you love dancing and you are also a dancing instructor in modern dance as well yes. or in modern dance. So uh, for here, I would like to give you some accessories that we use in Thai dancing. Okay. So this one is called Hu Jot. Hu means ear and yeah. Jot means attached. The women, they have like a small, small hair here. So they try to keep this out of the face when they dance. Yeah. So how you put it up oh, is Oh, I like, need that too. Yes. <laughs> so you have to put it up is you put uh, it attached to your ear here. Okay. And then you just attach it here. Wow. And it will look like this. And then when you, when you dance, it will... It's beautiful. Um, you wear it with a crown. In Thai, we call it Chada. So maybe I can try it. <laughs> yes. Just here. Thank you. Just, that's the left side. Oh. That's the left oh, side. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit confusing. <laughs> How we dance in Thailand, this is called Jeep. Jeep. And then um, um, this is called... Um, um, so, so when you switch from here to here, you switch like this. So um, the second one, this is called um, this is called left bond, which you put it on the nail. Um, that one is based in the central part of um, Thailand. Around it started from Ayutthaya, but this one is from the northern part of Thailand. Left means nails, right? And then fonts mean dance. So you put all of the, the little things here yeah? on, on, on the nails. Yeah, on the on the nails here. Yeah. So maybe you can try. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And then that's how you dance. Um, it's called Phon Ram in the northern part of Thailand. Um, 
Yeah, it's kind of like a slow dance, so you dance very slowly and then to see like the, the beauty of it and then, yes. <laughs> Beautiful. It's definitely the gift that you never received before. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. welcome. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Yeah. part that everyone's waiting for is the game I have and I have never. So I will read out these scenarios. Um, some of them are like about Thai culture, some of them about the culture in the Netherlands. So if you have done it before, you can raise up I have. And if you've never done it before, you can just raise I have never. And maybe you can go try the activity. So first question is we should talk about food. So have you ever had Dutch food that is not really Dutch? So I guess that would be the thing about bitter ballen, which is sort mm -hmm. of a meatball sort of thing, mm -hmm. which can taste very different in different countries depending ah, on who tries to. Yeah. Do can you it. repeat the, the name? Bitter ballen. Bitter ballen. Bitter. 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 With B. Oh, like bitter. Like bitter. bitter. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. exactly. Bitter. Exactly. Bitter ballen, yeah. So it's a meatball. Oh, yeah. It's sort of a meatball. I see. You do not want to know what's in it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we are a very international country, very globalized. Yes. And everywhere we went, mm. people came back, uh, came to the Netherlands, and we trade a lot. So we have all kinds of influence. In the Netherlands, we have, you can find literally restaurants from all over the world. So it's not like, well, we have a few typical Dutch dishes. They're not fantastic. I don't think you'll ever go. <laughs> you no, you won't find a Dutch restaurant in, in Beijing or in Bangkok. No, no. But well, you find Italian and French and right, uh, right. Uh, Vietnamese and you name it. We don't really have a very extended mm -hmm. Dutch. Why is um, the Netherlands, uh, the people not called the Netherlanders, why is it Dutch? Um, in, in the Dutch language, mm -hmm. it is a Nederlander. Oh, in Nederlander. Yeah. The, the, the English translation of yes. Nederland. Nederland. Because in Dutch, mm -hmm. Nederland means Netherlands. Right. And Nederland, low, low countries, yeah, because we are very flat, as you know. Right. Our highest Nederland. mountain is 300 meters. Right. So, <laughs> yes. hill, hill. Uh -huh. And uh, indeed, I think 26% of our territory is below sea level. Uh, and I'm sure you, you, well, you've been to Amsterdam, perhaps, if you land at the airport, mm -hmm. It's five meters below sea level, the airport, for example. So that's why uh, Still. it's called Nederland. Uh, or maybe yeah. lower. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's Getting going lower, lower because the sea is indeed. Yeah, yeah. But your canal system is very well planned. You know, the canal really. Yes, well, the water is one of the sectors where we think we really have a uh, top knowledge maybe. because, uh, well, as you perhaps know, we have regained land on the sea. Mm. So we have pushed back the sea. To, to have more land to live on and for agricultural purposes and so on. So we have a very complicated system of dikes and, and irrigation. Uh, irrigation. And we had once a flooding, what is it, uh, 60, 70 years ago, mm. uh, with quite a lot of uh, people who died. And since then on, it's an absolute national priority to have enough funding for a very complicated system of dikes and, and, and sloughs and, and everything housing, so yeah. to protect ourselves from the sea. Um, the audience would really love to hear some ties from both of you. Ooh, <laughs> can so, I say I... <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not an option. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'd like to teach you some Thai words that is hard to pronounce and also some Thai tongue twisters as well. And you can repeat Great. after me. This one is the one that I really like to teach my foreign friends. Um, But now, 
can we ask you a Dutch word? Yes. Ah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Now there's a city on the coast of the Netherlands mm -hmm. which you always use for foreigners to see to have the difficult sounds. Mm -hmm. It's called Scheveningen. Scheveningen. Hey. Oh. 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 <laughs> No, no, no. Schrijvening. Schrijvening. Yes, very good. Very good. Very good. Okay, this is the last one. Um, the difficult one. Yak yai, la yak lek, yak lek, la yak yai. It means um, big giant chases small giant, and small giant chases the big giant. So it's the thing that elementary schools kids like to you know use and play. So it's yak yai, la yak lek. Yak yai, lak yak lai, yak yak yai, lai, yak 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 yai. Say that again. Yak yai, yak yai, lai, lai, yak lai, yak yak yai, lai, yak lai, yak yai, yak yak yai, yak lai, yak yak yai, yak 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 Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. That was a long one. Okay, you passed you pass the test. Next up, have you ever seen your child or family members become disappointed or unhappy? The child? Yeah, I didn't disappoint. Of course, they're disappointed. <laughs> <Because Never. laughs> From the 2013 UNICEF report, um, they claim that the Dutch children is yep. the happiest in the world. Yeah. They said it's successful parenthood is measured by their child's. Happiness. Could you talk about a bit on um, on the parenting of the Dutch? For for our son, it's very difficult, uh, different mm -hmm. because uh, I mean we've been living in different countries right. away from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. um, so when he's so he brought up in international everywhere. schools and different mm -hmm. cultures, he's been so he's a third culture kid, which I is see. you can't really compare with uh, the Dutch children right, which grow right, up sorry, right. in the. In, mm -hmm. in the Netherlands, right, right. and there I think the, the idea is that they grow they grow up pretty independent, mm -hmm. so they're sort of a bit kind of almost thrown out and like yeah do all these things and right. uh, go along bicycling rather early and to school and uh, see friends and mm -hmm. play in the streets. Uh, but there's not a lot of traffic, of course. Right. That's I think the idea to, to to yeah to let them. Children. Well, certainly now, of course, with the social media, but it's true for all, yes. all young mm -hmm. children these days that they are exposed to so many different cultures. Yes. And of course, we uh, always wanted him. We lived with him in Brazil, in Nicaragua, in, uh, in Kenya. Uh, Kenya, Nairobi. That's when he was very small. Mm -hmm. So, of course, for him, it's an opportunity to see all these different cultures, to visit these countries. On the other hand, of course, we also made sure that he was. Uh, brought up also with a lot of Dutch input, so celebrating Dutch uh, special parties and so on, because of course he is Dutch, but again, as you said, he's also a very global citizen, but uh, so in that sense, uh, yeah. Maybe but he he's following your route of becoming a Oh no, <laughs> no, 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 I don't think he, uh, he Would will. Would you want him to be? Yeah, well, like, yeah, sure, but I mean, he, no, he has yeah. to be She's like, no. Yeah. Oh, but he has yeah. to be side. Well, for the parents, Lose, well, not losing your child, but having your child go out of the house is, 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 is well, it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's a moment. It's, it's, it's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, it's the same um, as in the Western culture, in that after 18 or you know when the kids attend university, they're on their own. Or yeah. Is it like, yeah. They are independent. They don't. Um, well, especially because he, he studied in the US. Right, right. And um, uh, we were in the Netherlands then. Mm -hmm. So you also have the time difference. And of right. course, you cannot go there for a weekend. Um, have you ever won a contest or and received a prize? Or have you been to a talent show? The reason I ask is that if you were a diplomat or if you want a dancer, then what would you want to be? Uh, in terms of uh, what would I like to be if not a diplomat? Yes, uh, Perhaps a pop star. Wow! Playing the band <laughs> sounds fun. Uh -huh. Yeah. Are you playing instruments? Yeah, I played a little bit of guitar, but nothing guitar. serious. Okay. But uh, no, but that it sounds like really to perform mm -hmm. in front of a big audience and right. playing your music that you like. And uh, I would. Rock. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> a bit loud can be a bit loud. Yeah. Is that a genre that you particularly like? Classic, pop? Or well, I, I I more and more listen to classical jazz. I like jazz, jazz very much. But I also like the, the hard stuff. Uh, 
song. Like the yelling? <laughs> yeah, well, not the, you know, but like, like the, <laughs> for the connoisseurs, the system of a down or a Nirvana or Linkin Park. And also, if you were a dancer, are you, you just love dancing and all, and there's nothing you want to, else you want to be? Well, you know, no, actually, the reason I yeah. wanted to be a psychologist also. Oh, psychologist. And the other thing might be a nature photographer because I'm just in awe of all life. Yeah, so fascinating. Enjoy, enjoy all the scenery. All here. plants, all mm -hmm. animals, all flowers and trees. And so I'm just, uh, yeah. It, it delights really me to just mm -hmm. think about how amazing this creation is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not diplomat, though. <laughs> nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, the question is on biking. Um, have you ever biked for over 10 kilometers a day? Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so 10 kilometers, I think it's from here to Dakutak uh, Dak Park. Yeah, I want to know why bike is so famous in the Netherlands. And um, is it because it's, everything is close to one another and it's so convenient that bike is maybe the only option? Well, first of all, I, uh, oh yes, I did bike uh, when I was young. Younger, younger. Uh, I did a lot of biking. I did some some races. Even uh, the longest was 225 kilometers. So we bike. Uh, Dutch people bike a lot. And why is it so popular? It's uh, well, we are small. The climate helps. You know, it's just too hot here to really bike. You know, it's not very pleasant. You sweat and so on. But in the Netherlands, normally we have uh, weather, that, weather, weather that is uh, cool, better yeah. suited indeed for, for biking. Except when it rains. But oh. Well, but we have all kinds of gear, you know, to protect yourself. It's a policy decision that we really wanted to promote biking because it's better for the environment and so on. So, and it keeps you healthy, you know, by, by moving. So we have a lot of biking lanes and so on. And uh, now there is a very active policy of discouraging people to own cars in the city. Mm. So for some cars are not even allowed to go into the center of the cities anymore oh, because of the air uh, quality. Right. Uh, there are a number of contributing factors, but I think the fact that we at the policy level took a decision to promote the bike helps. And a new development, which is not that new anymore, are the e-bikes which right, is right. very, very popular in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, you have a lot of wind often. So uh -huh. sometimes it can be very tough to go against the wind bicycling. I see, I see. So in that sense, the e-bikes help a lot. Yeah. But I mean, bicycling, in, uh, if you go on a holiday, like on the islands, are very popular for holiday destinations. And you usually go for, you know, long bikes, bike rides. Exactly. Everybody does that. Families, little chill, everybody joins in biking. This is actually a personal question for me that I'm intrigued to know from a Dutch friend of mine. So have you ever attended a friend's birthday party where you said congratulations to the friend's parents? And then the friend's parents says congratulations back to, to the friend but not actually directly to the friend. Everyone kind of like congratulates. Would you like other. to know the Dutch word for that? Yes, can you? It's a gefeliciteerd. 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 It's a good word. Yeah. We are again. Yeah. Gefeliciteerd. Hey, good. Gefeliciteerd. Yeah. Excellent. But it's true, it's a, I find it a very strange tradition, to be honest. Yeah. I wasn't used to that, but yeah. then it, sometimes you come to a birthday party and you have people sitting around and they start with the first one and they greet every single person in the room every and they, everybody one. congratulates each other and I, so I share a bit your uh, no, no, it's your, astonishment. You, you, you say gefeliciteerd with your friend, so that's right. how it works. Yeah. Or with your daughter or with your mother or with your whoever. Yeah, but you whichever, whichever relationship you have, right. this, is, this is how you say it, uh, you know, congratulations with your mother or with your daughter or with your... Whoever attends uh, the, the party yeah, with your sister, with your brother, with your friends. It takes, it takes a long time. <laughs> it's really, everybody does it and I'm like, but yeah. But the is the next year is their birthday again. So it's already so, passed okay. a year. Okay, so uh, that's all for the game part. Thank you so much for participating. Well, thank you. It was yeah. fun. And let's move on to the Q&A session. Hello, so now we're back. And during now, we are doing a Q&A session. So all these questions come from a various groups. So there's the Thai in the Netherlands, um, expats in Thailand, and also questions from Twitter and Facebook. Um, so everyone is asked, what is one question you would like to ask the ambassador of the Netherlands? The first question is, Your Excellency, dear ambassador of the Netherlands, 
as a diplomat for five different countries in four continents, what do you find most exciting in this career? And serving for over 30 years, um, do you see a pattern that you find repeatedly across different nations? Or every time when you go to a new country, everything is very fresh and new? Yeah. Well, actually, uh, already more than 40 years um, uh, oh, 40 I'm years. a okay. diplomat. Uh, huh? Um, well, as you said, I've been in many different countries, with different continents. Started uh, my day working for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, in 1979, but that is a long time ago. And I had postings in um, uh, Kenya, in New York, at our mission uh, to the United Nations, uh, in Nicaragua, in Brazil, uh, the last two countries as ambassador. And then uh, also, of course, now in Thailand, uh, also dealing, by the way, for, uh, with Laos and Cambodia, also being accredited to these two countries, which is important for us. Um, and of course, I had a number of functions in the ministry as well. And, um, well, there are similarities between the different postings. Uh, one of the highlights, of course, is always the, when you offer the credentials to the head of state or to the king, in right. the case of, uh, of uh, Thailand. That's always uh, where you officially present the letter you receive from your king, from our king from the Netherlands, and you give that letter to the head of state or the, the, the government of the other country. That's always a highlight. Uh, so that, and that is similar in all uh, postings. But of course, also there are a lot of differences between the different postings. And communication, again, is key as emphasized by you know, all the ambassadors. Um, Communication is key, and that's another very important change, the role of social media. Right. I mean, I started working, I remember we didn't have mobile phones <laughs> yet. Right. And you really wonder now, when we were making a file for our ministers, mm -hmm. we were typing, and when you make, when the secretary who was typing it made one wrong what? word, mm -hmm. she had to use Typex, and I'm sure your listeners uh. don't know what it is anymore. <laughs> but you had to put something white and do it again to erase the letter. Right. It is, if you look at how we work now, that is an incredible change. You can just think now change. and then that's an send out the message change. and then millions of yeah. people would see it. Exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah. a very important of, um, yeah. um, social media regulation as that's well. That's very, you know, yeah. The message Big that change. you convey there as well. Um, next up, this is a bit more serious. Uh, so on economics, um, the questions read, the Netherlands economy is known as the world's top 20th largest economy and then top 10 among European countries. What do you think is the cause in terms of trades or like policies that could be different from uh, your neighboring country? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, I think there are a number of factors probably. Well, first of all is our location. If you look at the Netherlands within the European Union, you can really see that we are the gateway to Europe, as we call ourselves. We have the port of Rotterdam, which is the biggest European port. And you can see, for example, if you look at the exports of Thailand or of other countries, and you look their exports to Europe, very often we are one of the biggest markets they go to because they go to Rotterdam. Right. And lots of products are going through the Netherlands to other countries, to Germany or to Belgium or to France, but they start in the Netherlands. We also have one of the biggest airports in, uh, in Europe, uh, Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. So our location is very important, which means a lot of uh, economic activity. Probably our education is very important, our schooling system, and we really stimulate creativity. I think uh, kids are really stimulated, not only to listen to the professor or to the teacher, but also come up with a critical mind, because you can see that that also leads to more creativity in the economy. We are a relatively expensive country in terms of uh, salaries and so on. So we really have to always look at uh, innovation. And innovation is another important factor, I think, to explain our economic performance. Um, we need to innovate. We need to stay ahead of the pack in terms of uh, surviving economically. So there's a lot of uh, research and development going on in the Netherlands and so on take one sector, the agricultural sector, for example, but well, we have the, one of the, if not the most famous agricultural university uh, in the world, the Wageningen University. And it is very strange to realize, for example, that if you, if you look at the agricultural sector, we are the second exporter in the world. 
And yes, if you look at yes. if you Only look at the, after you, the U.S. and exactly. your country is less than one percent the size of the U.S. So many how people is that possible? are wondering how, if you look at this tiny little country <laughs> and you look at big oh. countries like Brazil, like Russia, right. uh, how come that even we have Thailand. more? We are and like even ten Thailand. times bigger yes, than you. Yes, excellent, 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 <laughs> exactly. But that's because, of course, we are the second exporter, not in terms of volume, but in terms of uh, value. Value. And that is because we focus on very, very uh, Price added to high, high, high value added products. For example, seeds, believe it or not, but seeds, some seeds are more valuable than gold. As I was mentioning, we, are, we have been in Thailand uh, since more than 400 years, but it's true for all over the world. We are a very trading nation. So because of this international orientation, I guess that so far has allowed us to have this uh, good economic performance. You talk about um, the coordination with the agriculture sector here in Thailand because also we are of the one of the major large exporters of um, agricultural goods here as well. Even um, with you know um, the Gazeta University, um, the pioneer university that you coordinate with, maybe you can talk a bit on that. No, indeed, we have quite a lot of cooperation in the agricultural sector because we are both agricultural countries. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of Thai students, for example, have been going to Wageningen University. Uh, one of the attractive things of the uh, sides of the Dutch university system is we have many, many courses in English. Actually, within European Union, we are the country with most English courses, English language courses uh, from the whole of the EU. We have a lot of uh, technology to share. And uh, but Thailand is, as you said, also an important producer in the agricultural right. sector, and of course your rice exports and so on. So I would say it's a win-win situation. And uh, so we stimulate as an embassy, of course, contacts between Kazakhstan University and Wageningen, but also other universities and research institutions. It's also a very intense cooperation. And now, especially these days, they're using the technology to um, reduce risk and reduce uncertainties in the you know, agriculture sector, even through like predicting the climate or... Um, yeah, that's a growing sector where we work together is indeed everything that is related to climate. For example, talking about agriculture, um, well, you, you realize, I understand Thailand, uh, rice is of course always a very yeah, important product abundance. of Thailand, yeah. but you see that Thailand sometimes, they cannot have two uh, productions a year anymore because there's not enough water. Because right. of the drought, right, right. or there is Both flooding is for that limited. matter. Yes. So that is one reason that you have to think of uh, seeds that are much uh, that are drought resistant. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to change that. Another aspect is salinization. You know the sea level is rising, right. so salt water is more and more entering into right. the land worldwide. Right. So we have also uh, research going on to see how can you manage. Uh, the manage that and have plants that, that you can also grow with salty water. And you touch a bit on language as well. Um, so the question on the language is about, um, I went to the Netherlands several times and got to know that most Dutch learn to speak English at an early age in the education system. I'm curious to know, even though other European countries teach English to kids since young age as well, why does the adoption in English much stronger in the Netherlands? Yeah, well, again, because we have this tradition, this international tradition, and again, being a trading nation and being relatively small, you know, to, to get by in the world, you need to speak languages. So for us, it's a necessity. But apart from it, I think in the Netherlands, 90% of Dutch people speak English, 90%. Wow, wow. Uh, again, also because our exposure to uh, American and English culture, social media yes. also plays a role. Uh, I think what you mentioned about the TV and the movies yes. is very important because basically if you look at, I don't know, let's say uh, The Crown, just yeah, the yes. Netflix series Netflix that you series. might have seen, okay. yes. uh, we're both uh, a monarchy, so for us these are kind of interesting okay. series to watch. Um, but in the Netherlands you would listen to the English and you would read the Dutch translation. So it's basically you enjoy watching the series. But at the same time, for people who do not speak English very well, it's a course. You, can, you know, it's read, a, yeah. so even without perhaps realizing it, you learn the language, you learn certain words because of that. To be honest, perhaps a message to Thai, uh, the Thai audience. I really think it is so important also for Thailand to 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 
do more about its the English language, uh, language uh, training at school. Yeah. It is so important in the world to be able to move around. But it's, and, uh, I hope time will pick it up as well. Okay, um, so moving on, I am inspired by your country's LGBTQ movement and support of the community. We, Thailand, recently approved a civil union bill. Um, from this, my partner and I are hopeful that we will someday get there. What can we do to push forward legalization of same-sex marriages? Um, I read that the Netherlands is the first country in the world to allow gay marriage. Indeed, again, good question. Of course, I'm very important for quite a number of people. Well, I think it's an important step in the right direction. It is true that um, uh, we had, we were the first country to totally uh, treat uh, same-sex people same way as legal, yeah, as legal, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, and I think an important distinction between what you have now and how we did it is that we have uh, equated same-sex marriage, legally speaking, similar in all areas, not only for marriage, but oh, also for okay. labor laws and for inheritance, for uh, secu social security, for insurance purposes. So it's totally so all, aspects. all aspects, which I think is very important because having this um, marriage even uh, uh, say it's having this possibility is important, but and we know that, for example, on the on the work floor, there are still quite some differences between the way same-sex people are treated and people from uh, let's say from different sexes. So right. in that sense, that's hopefully where you will go. I think Thailand really deserves praise for the way you have integrated LGBTI people in your day daily life. Thailand is really very open compared country. to many other countries. So I guess it would be the, in terms of time um, uh, for the legalization yes. to push forward. Exactly. But yeah. now, um, yeah, let's hope our best. Next up question uh, is on soft drugs legalization in the Netherlands. Um, the question reads, I hear that soft drugs are legalized in the Netherlands, but surprisingly there is a low number of drug addicts and users compared to high percentage of users in other countries that um, this kind of drug selling is illegal. Why do you think the number is lower in the Netherlands? Is it because of uh, healthcare regulations, people, culture? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, a uh, few, few, few uh, dimensions. First of all, we make a very, very big difference between soft drugs and hard drugs. Right. Soft drugs is the marijuana, the joint, the occasional right, joint you yeah. smoke. Cannabis. And exactly. Yeah. And hard drugs is heroin, cocaine, uh, crack, all these kind of terrible right, things. Right. And on the hard drugs, there is no permissiveness whatsoever. We are as tough as all the other countries around us there because there's a total consensus. This is absolutely dramatic for your health and so public, public health and so on. Soft drugs, uh, we have decided to be more permissive. So uh, you've been to the Netherlands, so I'm sure you're familiar with the coffee shops we have there, yes, shop. where basically you can go in, and you can buy small quantities, uh, you can buy a joint or whatever for personal consumption. So you're not allowed to trade, but you can buy for personal and consumption. And you can smoke in the shop. coffee shop, but to be honest, also on the street, you can basically uh, smoke. Uh, but somehow, perhaps also because people found it, young people, a bit less sexy to smoke soft drugs since it was allowed. Oh. You know, sometimes you do things because you grow up okay. and you want to do stuff different and oh, it's not allowed and so on. <laughs> but because it's allowed, people found it perhaps interesting less anymore. interesting to do. Uh, so in that sense, it is true that on soft drugs, soft drugs people are using it yet, but I would say indeed probably less than young people in other countries. Um, also, fun fact, again, if you are wondering, if you've never been to the Netherlands, um, coffee shop is where you can go and, you know, buy small amounts of cannabis or marijuana, but coffee house is where you get the coffee yeah. or pastry or whichever, so don't mix the two, so there is two terms. So, but yeah. you can also get coffee in the coffee shop. Uh, yes, yes. So you can, so, so, so <laughs> you can have a coffee with your joint. That's what it is. So yeah. But John, again, yeah. uh, of course, we, we do realize, and especially Amsterdam, which is my city where yes. I come from, uh, sees also some negative 
impacts from allowing the sale of soft drugs because a lot of young tourists from other parts of Europe come to Amsterdam because it is allowed there and you right. can get high and so on. Right. So there are now, there is a policy about to start to discourage the, se the sale of soft drugs to foreigners. So you would only be allowed to buy soft drugs if you can show that you are living, actually in living in the Netherlands. Okay, um, lastly on traveling, and I know we are doing a lockdown right now, but there's a lot of time traveling to um, Netherlands every year, uh, whether for study, for um, travel purpose, for meeting with families, and also there's a lot of um, Dutch that came to Thailand. So this question is brief. I went to Amsterdam and Rotterdam with my university friends back in 2017. The sceneries of the canals were stunning. I wish more of my friends and family get to experience the Netherlands. So in addition to the beautiful canal ring, um, where would you recommend for a visit? Well, unfortunately, we don't have much time left because I could say many, many things, of course, uh, because I think it's a country that has a lot to offer. Uh, if I would have to name a few, I would certainly say the museums in Amsterdam are very special, also in other cities, but because of lack of time. Uh, we have also the Van Gogh Museum, right. and I know Van Gogh is very popular in uh, in uh, Thailand as well for very good reasons. In Thai, we call him Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Okay. Yeah, in Dutch it's, it's Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Vincent. Yeah. Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah. Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, there is a very nice museum in Amsterdam, uh, Local? devoted uh, only to Van Gogh. And actually, there's another museum uh, in uh, our main national park, the Veluwe, it's called, which is kind of in the middle of the oh. country, which is a very nice uh, park uh, where you can really make very nice walks and uh, bicycles, uh, bicycle trails and so on. And there also in the middle of the park, you have another museum. Oh, so there's an the exhibition. Right oh, yeah, yeah, middle? it's beautiful. Oh, the wow. surrounding is okay. spectacular. Okay, so and really, they have a lot of here. Van Gogh museum, uh, Van Gogh paintings. And also quite some other paintings, so that's really worth a visit. And then we have uh, the Rijksmuseum. Perhaps I should have started with it because that's our most famous museum. Which, if you go there, take two days because it's too big it's to do lot. in uh, one day. <laughs> and they have everything from pottery to paintings. They have, of course, the the Night Watch of Rembrandt, which, of course, is one of the most famous paintings in the world. Uh, but they have many old ma Dutch masters. But they have. Um, uh, ships, they have uh, uh, antiques, they have uh, furniture, they have lots of things. So it's really very nice and it's in the middle of Amsterdam. So that's certainly worth a visit. And then uh, lastly, perhaps the uh, the Dutch islands. We have a few I islands on the north to the northwest of the Netherlands. And you go by, by boat, boat? Okay. yeah, a ferry, ferry. And these are beautiful islands that they are, especially the smaller ones with the only nature, dune landscape. Nature. Uh, one, you cannot even go by car. There are no cars on that island, or a few, but you cannot go with your own car. And basically, we talked about bicycling. Yeah. So there, to move around, you bicycle. Like, oh, and you have these beautiful uh, dune landscapes. You can walk for hours and just have birds around you and the sea. And oh, a bit cooler nice. temperature than Thailand. So it's, uh, <laughs> much cooler, yes, much cooler. It's certainly worth a visit as yes. well. Okay, so make sure um, we will list all the links that the ambassadors have mentioned about the museums and the islands and yeah that's all for today oh, thank you so much for well for thank, you so much. Yeah, thank you so much it was a pleasure talking to your audience for yes. a few minutes yeah, thank you for for watching and stay tuned on the next episode of this ambassador we will go on next thank you very much thank, thank you, you. Thank you.